probably one of the most profound and powerful things that I've done in my life to grow and progress my business and my relationships and my own personal relationship with myself has been to invest in coaching. And over the last three years, I have invested over $30,000 into business coaching, professional coaching, therapy, and I have gotten so many tools and gifts from it. And in this video, I'm going to share the top takeaways and lessons that I have learned in both my personal life and my professional life. Let's dive in. So my name is Kaylee Marks. I'm founder of Podcast Farm. I'm an award-winning music producer, content creator, and self-growth enthusiast. And I want to share with you the top takeaways. These are going to be high level for the most part, not a ton of tactical things, maybe more strategy. I'm going to go into each of them as much as possible, but for the sake of time, I can only go so deep. So if you have any questions or thoughts or contributions to any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts. You can leave them in the comments below. Let's get into this stuff. So I'm gonna hop back and forth between personal lessons and business ones. So to start with, one of the biggest takeaways that I have learned in my personal life is that listening is loving. Throughout my life, I have had different kinds of relationships. And one of the common themes is how much it impacts the other person when I truly show up to listen to them and truly show up to hear them and not try to fix them or to just solve their problems or to hurry them through their suffering, but to really get clear on what they're saying, to reflect that back to them and how much that makes them feel loved. And it's such a simple thing. It's counterintuitive in a way. And I think a lot of us find it challenging to only listen without trying to change or solve. And that's one of the biggest takeaways from my personal life, from the coaching that I've done in the area of relationships, also in therapy, is the power and impact of truly listening to someone. Another takeaway from business, investing in coaching is actually investing into myself. So even though my coach and my mentors have been absolutely transformational and so helpful along my journey. The container that I'm investing in is really about myself. It is me taking my money and investing it into my education and into a period of time where I'm going to try and make progress. And I think that was a big shift because then what that empowered me to do is even if the program I was in was not maybe the best program or I had some issues with it, I know that I can use that container to actually achieve my goals. So when I invest, in myself or in a coaching program, I'm deeply investing in my own growth and my own development. Another personal takeaway, we have to work with our nervous system. I can't avoid how my body is feeling. I can't avoid the difficult sensations. I can't try to numb it or distract. I mean, I certainly can try, but it usually crops up in negative ways or ways that are counterproductive later. And so through breathing, through self-regulation, I've learned that my nervous system is part of who I am or who I show up in the world with, and I need to collaborate with it, which means I need to listen to it. I need to listen to its feedback and I need to take care of myself. And so this could be, you know, in an argument with a family member or a loved one and feeling flooded, feeling overwhelmed, feeling angry and reactive and like I'm not in control of my responses. So in that moment, I need to work with my nervous system and maybe take a break, maybe go take five minutes to myself and breathe. And so rather than fighting against my nervous system, it's working with it. In business, what I've seen across many, many, many programs is the core strategy is to understand our clients deeper, to understand their pain and their goals and their visions, the obstacles they're dealing with on a daily basis. To understand that more fully, that is the core strategy of all the great business programs. There are plenty of tactics, there are plenty of strategies they teach that are absolutely valuable, but the underlying foundation of everything is to understand who we are trying to work with more. And by doing that, our offers and our business becomes even more attractive and even more valuable. In the personal realm, I have blind spots. I have areas and aspects about myself that I am not aware of, that I do not see or will not see. And so when I have worked with coaches, when I have worked with therapists, and when I have really great friends, they help me to identify 
those blind spots and to reflect them back. And that is extremely valuable and sometimes extremely painful. But by being open to this idea that there are things that I do, ways I behave, things I say that I'm not consciously aware of, it allows me to lean into that and to grow and to hopefully gather intelligence about how I can show up even deeper and even more in alignment, more authentically and with more love and compassion for those around me. And it allows me to kind of accept more about myself. This one's hard. This is shadow work. This is not always easy to look at, but the blind spots can actually harm our growth. They can harm our relationships, our business. And so being open to this idea, being open to feedback about my blind spots, it gives me clarity on how I can show up fuller and better for the people I love and for myself. Another business takeaway, money and earning money and making money is primarily a mindset issue. A lot of us have limiting beliefs around money. I know I do and have, and will always reach new ceilings of that belief. You know, there's always room to grow. And so when it comes to money, we have to examine our beliefs around it. We have to question the way that we were brought up around money, the way that we have grown to use and think of money and be open to learning new ways of behaving, new ways of being and using money. By studying with mentors and coaches, I have seen a different way of doing things and a different way of perceiving things that have really impacted the way that I use money, utilize it, how I generate it, and just how I think about it in general. In the personal realm, this one is one that I am still constantly working on, which is that being a people pleaser, sacrificing myself to avoid conflict or to appease or please people around me, it is ultimately a selfish thing. And it does not help me to achieve happiness, joy, or love. In fact, it makes me feel less myself. It makes me feel more angry at the people I love. Of, it prevents me from showing up fully and offering my gifts. And this is not an easy one. This is a really deep one. And it is a pattern that I have to continually work with. But it has been really helpful to just understand that by appeasing or pleasing those around me, I'm not necessarily achieving what I want out of life. This one's really interesting. In the business realm, doing a lot doesn't always accomplish a lot. It doesn't always get me to where I'm going. And at the same time, I often have to do more than I think. So there's two things going on. One is we can be doing busy work. We could be posting all the time and engaging on social media and writing lots of emails and answering lots of phone calls. And we could actually not be pushing our business goals forward. And on the other hand, we could not be taking enough actions. We can post a couple times about our new course or a new product and hear crickets and feel, you know, why is no one responding? And the truth is we need to do thousands more actions per month in order to generate the amount of business that we're looking for. So the conversion rate is really important. And honestly, email marketing and just organic outreach has really taught me a lot about this conversion rate. It would be a great thing if 20% of everyone that I reach out to responds. And so with that in knowledge, if I want to talk to 20 people, then I'm going to need to reach out to 100 people. And so I'll need to do more than I'm really thinking. However, I've gotten really bogged down in mindless tasks that don't actually push my business forward. So becoming crystal clear on what I need to do to push my goals forward has been extremely valuable. In the personal world, boundaries are for me. They are not for other people. So when I set a boundary, that boundary is actually me expressing what I need and will do in a certain circumstance. It is not telling someone not to do something. It is telling someone what will ha what I will do if a certain behavior or action is, is done, right? It's, it's me taking care of my needs and that's a big mindset shift. I used to try and set boundaries as a way to control what other people were doing. And what I've learned the hard way is that I can only control my actions and my behavior. So boundaries are actually for me and about me. So one of the things I've been discovering lately in my business is the power of my zone of genius. You know, we also hear staying in our lane. There's so much power in focusing on where I have the most mastery, where I have the most expertise, where I have the most joy and love, where I've spent the most amount of my time. There's so much power in that. And when I stop trying to be a master of everything and kind of focus on that, it allows me to access more of my authentic offering and more of the value that I can bring to others. This one, while it is a personal takeaway, it also applies to business. And that is the essence of feedback, the essential nature of feedback and how valuable it can be. While it can be painful, 
It is the key to growth. It is the key to deeper relationships. And it's really a transformative practice to learn more about. So when we think about feedback, sometimes we think it's like someone telling us what we've done wrong. But what I've learned is feedback is very nuanced and there's lots of different kinds of feedback. There's lots of different motivations and intentions in giving and receiving feedback. And again, going back to this idea of the nervous system, we are actually dealing with people's nervous system when we give feedback. So the amygdala, that fight or flight response in our brain, a lot of that stuff gets triggered when we give someone feedback. And therefore, it's very valuable to learn how to deliver feedback in a way that it can be received. And so just the power of feedback has been a game changer for me. And on that note, I'm going to share another personal takeaway, which is the point that criticizing people never works. It just does not work. There may be some circumstances where it's absolutely essential, but if there's ever an opportunity to not criticize, it will work out more in our favor. And that kind of plays into feedback. If we can give feedback, we can avoid criticism. We can give supportive, constructive feedback and actually accomplish the goal. Whereas if we criticize, we usually demean people, we usually uninspire them, deflate them, trigger them, or just make them defensive. Now in business, one of the most powerful financial takeaways I've learned is is this idea of sequestering money away from myself and specifically from the book Profit First, which I'll link in the comments. And the idea is that I am going to take profit, a percentage of all income coming into my business, I'm going to take a percentage of that profit, I'm going to put it aside in a different bank account. And then it also goes on to say, I'm going to take a certain aside and put it away for tax. I'm going to take a certain percentage and put it aside for my owner's compensation. I'm going to take a certain percentage or what's left of that. And then that is what I can use for expenses. And if my expenses are greater than what I have left after taking out profit, tax, owner's compensation, I cannot afford those expenses. That has been absolutely mind blowing in my business. And it has allowed me to consistently make profit in my business and to consistently be in the green. And so I highly recommend checking out the Profit First system. Really, really useful. Huge personal takeaway that I've gotten from all my coaching, which is the transformative power of writing. So by writing, we are externalizing our thinking and we often uncover our essence and how we really feel about stuff. Oftentimes we think we don't know the answer. The truth is we aren't sitting with ourselves and exploring the contents of our subconscious enough. And so, you know, whether you do morning pages or you do a gratitude journal or you just free write or you do bullet points, it doesn't really matter. But the point is, is having a consistent practice of writing has consistently changed my life. Whenever I go into large periods of time where I'm writing, I experience massive shifts in my personal and professional life. Now, you may be asking, uh, when I shared this with my mother, she said, what if I judge my writing and it keeps me from writing? Like, I wish I wanted to write, but I don't because when I start, I run out of ideas. And that is where morning pages is essential, which is the idea of do not worry about the quality. You want to try and write like three pages first thing in the morning. And it doesn't matter if you write the same word over and over again, say, I don't like writing. I feel blocked and I don't know what to say. As you continue on that page, you will begin to unravel your mind. And underneath that first layer is a huge expansive world of yourself, of your own inner world to explore. And there is so much gold in there. So I highly recommend checking out morning pages and engaging in some sort of writing practice. Another key point in my business coaching experience is conversations are key. The more conversations I have, the more I grow, the more I learn about my business and specifically in my business, the more conversations I have, it seems to directly correlate to revenue. And so the power of conversations and dialogue are that not only do we learn a lot about the person we're talking to, but we learn a lot about ourselves and how we show up with that person and creating opportunities to interact with someone authentically and to make connections. It may not pay off in the short term. It may not even pay off in the long term, but things have a tendency of coming full circle. And the more conversations I've had, the more my network is enriched, the more my business grows. And in fact, because I'm a podcast consultant, I've built a business around conversations. So it's pretty clear why I value them as much as I do. In the personal coaching realm, another powerful takeaway is that sharing our gifts is magic and it's healing for both ourself and other people. So when we're tapped into the things that we love and that we're most passionate about, and we share that with people, we don't actually realize the effect that that has on them, the impact it has on them and what it might unlock for them. And so really sharing our passions is a gift. It is a present 
to others and by doing so we heal ourselves. And on that point, this is another massive takeaway. Humans are messy and that is okay. It is a massive relief to acknowledge this, that we are messy, we are imperfect beings and that that's okay. And beyond that, our mess is our message. That is what we are here to talk about and to share is our messiness and all the points where we're kinked up and out of integrity and ashamed of and all those things. That is our message. And our message is our medicine. So humans are messy and that's okay because our mess is our message and our message is our medicine. And by sharing our message, we are taking our own tonic. We are healing ourselves by sharing the message that we know we need. And that message helps other people. There's always someone who can relate to the experience we're going through. We're not alone on this planet of over 7 billion people. So I find that to be one of the most powerful takeaways of my coaching experiences. This one's huge. This one is worth its weight in literal gold. And that is that the fortune is in the follow-up. I cannot explain how many times I have followed up with potential leads, even in my personal life with potential dates. How many times I've followed up with people twice, three times, four times, as long as they're not saying, stop writing me, I will follow up with people. And I cannot tell you how much revenue that's brought, how many amazing, powerful experiences that's given me and the opportunities that await. If you're willing to follow up, most people do not follow up enough. So again, with consent and not bulldozing over people's boundaries, follow up. The fortune is there. Another huge lesson is and I spoke about this a little bit with boundaries, but we cannot change others. We just cannot. We can we can support others in their own transformation. We can request changes. We can request our partners and our family members behave in a different way that works for us. We can collaborate on that. But at the end of the day, the decision is in their hands. We can only change ourselves. And a lot of suffering comes about when we are trying to change other people. It's not fun for them and it's not fun for us. And it's really, it's better to give up trying to change other people and to work on what we can do, embodying the change that we want to see and having good boundaries. And not everyone is for us and I'm not for everyone. All right. Another lesson I've learned in business is to get to the point and respect our audience's time. So in the way that we structure content and our marketing, it is always to our advantage to think about the audience and think about their time and try and respect their time because time is the true valuable commodity that we have. It's the true resource that we can spend in our life. So we want to respect that. We want to get to the point, try and make it as valuable for our audience as possible and remove the fluff. Let's just get to the gold. In my personal life, especially after the pandemic, I realized that community is true wealth and is where there is my true joy is in community. And I'm not talking about a massive community or a tiny community. It's really dependent on what you need, but community is everything. I didn't used to prioritize people as much as other things like my projects or my interests, but now I'm realizing that by strengthening my community and by supporting my community, I'm uplifted, everyone's uplifted, and we can create so much more in this world together. In business, stop charging hourly. Enough said. Try and move to a value-based pricing. Try to move to pricing models that are based on the outcome and the result and the value to the business. When I moved away from hourly pricing, my business changed. Through many hours of therapy and inner child work, I have come to realize that all of us are holding a younger childlike version of ourself inside to different extents and capacities we're in touch with that little kid and most of our triggers and our traumas and our and our blocking points in relationship have to do with the inner young version of ourself and have to do with us needing to hold ourselves and to attend to that younger part to give ourselves love that we didn't receive or are not receiving and the key to so much therapeutic work that we can do lies in getting into touch with that younger part of ourself without shame and without judgment and with unconditional love. This one is powerful because as a spiritual practitioner myself, I have had conflicts with money and business and sales and how is that spiritual? But one of the biggest takeaways from coaching is that sales can be spiritual. And we often think of a car salesman who is scamming people when we think of sales. But the truth is sales is a conversation and a collaboration with our ideal dream clients. And it is a opportunity to contribute value and to both grow. And so I truly think that sales can bring us right 
up against our obstacles and our blocks and our mindset issues. And it brings us up to our growth edge and it helps us to align ourselves and to be more in integrity. So sales can be spiritual. And as long as we understand that our goal is to facilitate the person who we're talking to, to facilitate their clarity and to help them to make the best decision for them, even if that's not buying from me, then sales can really be a powerful and transformative spiritual practice. Huge one is that crisis. The times in our life when we are experiencing the most crisis are opportunities. They're dangerous, but they're also opportunities. And there's a threshold where we could basically feel like the world is ending. And there may be this precious window of opportunity that if we can stay focused on creative solutions, we can actually end up in a better position than we were, avert more crisis and avert making the situation horrendously worse. There's this adage thrown around that crisis in Chinese equals danger plus opportunity. And that is somewhat close. It's not exactly right, but there's a lot of wisdom in that, which is when we are most stressed out and freaked out in our life, if we can hold a little bit of space for the possibility Ability, we can actually turn the whole situation around. And so that's been an extraordinarily powerful lesson in my life. Money is an illusion. We are the value behind the transaction. Our gifts are the value. And so when we get so focused on earning and so focused on money and we forget about the actual things that are valuable in life, we actually delude ourselves and we cheat ourselves. Money is not the value. Money is paper. The value is in our agreements with each other. The value is in the gifts that we're giving and, and, and we are the value. It is our life essence, our time and our energy that is the value. And so keeping that front of mind is so important and it's so impactful it's so powerful. One of the biggest takeaways after all of this coaching is that when I invest in myself, it is always the best investment. I have never regretted investing in myself. And when I do so, I notice extraordinary leaps and, and gains in my personal life, in my business, in my mood, in my emotional well-being. And so I know when I go and I put some money into whether that's education or self-care or whatever it may be, my health, it is always returning the most out of any of my other investments. Focus on others more than myself. So especially in business, the more I prioritize my ideal clients and their vision and their dreams, and I don't prioritize me, myself, my ego, the better it goes for everyone and the more supported they are. The better it goes for my business, the more results we get for them. If I'm too caught up in my own trip, I'm not fully present with them and my positioning is all off. And so if you're having problems in the marketing of your product or service, Try and flip the script around and see how you can focus even more on your clients and more on their goals and their obstacles and their vision. Businesses can and do become ravenous, cash devouring monsters. This is the problem with scaling too fast. And so I've been learning to take my time and to grow organically and not just try to scale because I think that's what success means because I can see how the more I grow my business, the more cash it eats and in order to prevent a total crash or bankruptcy, I need to be able to support the growth and to support the weight and the momentum that I create. And so by taking my time and being patient with myself, I've been able to see healthy growth in my business year after year without going into debt and without a ton of stress. And that is a huge realization for me that I did not understand when I started my journey. The last takeaway is to be of service to others, that there is so much joy and there's so much abundance when we truly desire to be of service. And that is why I do what I do. That is why I believe in getting coaching and receiving coaching. And I really do hope that these takeaways were somehow of service to you in your journey. I know that not everyone can invest in coaching immediately or all the time. And so my goal with this video was to share the top takeaways and the gems and the lessons that I have learned from so many amazing coaches. I want to give a shout out to Tobias Dahlberg of the Future Academy. I want to give a shout out to Jason Gaddis of the Relationship School. I want to give a shout out to Jess Jesse Johnson of Jesse Johnson Coaching. I want to give a huge shout out to Shrikala, who is the first coach I ever 
invested in. I want to give a huge shout out to my counselors and therapists who've guided me along my healing journey. And of course, to all my friends who give me coaching as well. There's probably no greater power than a circle of trusted advisors to help you run your kingdom and to serve your people with your highest, most authentic expression. If you got anything from this video, if you disagree with anything, if you have any contributions or you want to ask any questions, please, please comment below. I want to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe this video if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on the podcast and you think this will serve someone, please share it with them. And wherever you are, I wish you joy and abundance on your journey. I'm Kaylee Marks. Thank you again for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next video. 